Before beginning with this presentation, I want to thank J.P. Astroguy on his YouTube video, AM5 Altas Visual, Visual Astronomy, Episode 10, where he details how to configure the AM5 mount from EQ mode to Altas mode. I have supplied a link to this specific video as this really is an outstanding video. Well, hello everyone. On November 3rd, 2023, um, I did visual observing using the ZWO AM5 configured in Alt As mode. Alt As mode is uh, a great convenient way of viewing the sky because uh, the eyepiece that you're looking at is really positioned up and down and moves with the mount as it's uh, looking left or right into the sky. Uh, and the EQ mount, you never really know where the eyepiece is going to end up. It could be at a variety of levels based on how the uh, EQ mount is uh, positioned uh, looking at the sky. It can be really awkward, it can be really low, it can be at a variety of angles, uh, requiring you to uh, reposition the diagonal and eyepiece each time. An alt as mount uh, negates that completely. So also used in, with, with the AM5 mount was the ASI Air Pro. It's essentially a small computer that for astronomy and astrophotography. And you can connect cameras and other devices to this uh, small computer. In this case, I connected a, uh, my, my 50 millimeter guide scope and, and with that camera, uh, connected to as the main camera in the the ASI Air Pro, um, I used it for plate solving. So what is plate solving? So plate solving involves taking an image of the night sky, compares that with the with the database of images that it contains within the software, and this allows uh, for the software to tell the mount where it's located. And then allows for precise go to or you know moving to from one target to another and once it gets to the the next target it will center that target for you um, that's both in terms of the camera and in uh, the eyepiece now to accomplish this successfully you really need to align your both your your scopes to uh, to each other really the guide scope and the main the visual scope have to be aligned so that um, both your targets from the camera's perspective and your eyes perspective uh, are centered now here's a quick look at the gear used for observing um, now note that this image was taken uh, after I finished observing but just before I started putting everything away so the first arrow shows the Saboni uh, 50 millimeter guide uh, scope uh, with the red camera plugged into the very back. And the other end of this cable that you see at the top of the camera is connected to the, the ZWO ASI Air computer. The next arrow shows the eyepiece which I uh, observed through. This is a 30 millimeter eyepiece right for viewing uh, various star clusters. And the next object uh, here is a laser pointer that I used early on to help me align both the, um, the 50 millimeter uh, scope and the observing scope. And the observing scope is the Skywatcher uh, SkyMax 127. It's a Maxitoff type telescope. It's a five inch telescope, great little scope with a long uh, focal length, great for re seeing the stars and uh, galaxies, nebula. It's, it's a beautiful little scope. And you might be interested in knowing that with all the accessories to include the, uh, the Lozmandy dovetail plate, um, everything weighed in at 11.2 pounds. 
Uh, last part of the gear, but certainly not least, is the ZWO AM5 mount configured in alt as mode. Now you might see a, the little antenna that's sticking up and, and pointing forward. Uh, that's the ZWO ASI Air computer. Um, and I have that little camera that you see in the back connected to this, as well as power from the mount going to the, uh, the ASI Air computer. And that's it for cables. Um, in in Altas mode, this mount is really great for the way this this mount is designed. Um, they really were thinking about uh, Altas configuration because there's absolutely little chance of any cable snagging uh, at all. Now, because I was using the uh, the little computer or the ASI Air. Um, this computer allows you to uh, uh, save off any images, and that inc includes doing what I was doing, which is taking a quick one-second uh, image of all the targets, and it created a folder for each target, named those folders for me, and it made it real easy to use uh, those images uh, in any way I wanted to, which uh, in this situation was for this presentation. So very little processing was done. Very, you know, uh, I wanted to imitate what you would see if you were looking through the eyepiece to the greatest extent possible. Uh, the, the 174 is a very sensitive camera. Um, there, there probably is considerable um, overexposure, if you will, compared to what you would see in the uh, actual eyepiece. And I'm, I'm explaining this to keep expectations real. So up is the M34 open star cluster. Here's an enlarged view of that star cluster. And next is the M31 Andromeda Galaxy. Now this actually um, is a better representation of what, how you would see Andromeda through a, um, a telescope. Granted, the core there where you see the, the, the white uh, dot, if you will, or the white, is, is brighter than what you would see through the eyepiece. But generally speaking, this is a pretty close representation of it. Here's an enlarged view. Next up is the M38 or Open Star Cluster. Um, it is a very, very pleasing view through the eyepiece. Here's an enlarged view. I believe this is also called the starfish cluster as well. Next up is the wonderful uh, M45 Pleiades cluster, um, or called, commonly referred to as the Seven Sisters. And if, you, if there are any Subaru owners out there, that is also the emblem on the front of your car. I highly recommend anybody going out, if you've got a, you know, binoculars or any small telescope this is actually the best way to view um, visually view um, Pleiades. Next up is the salt and pepper open star cluster and Cassiopeia are called M4, M52. Here's an enlarged view. Next up is M103. Now here, granted, I, I can see this is not very uh, impressive to look at. Through the eyepiece, however, it was actually very pleasing. A uh, good friend of mine and fellow amateur astronomer uh, told me about this years ago, and ever since, uh, I try to look at this target. Uh, because uh, in the, it, what you actually see in the eyepiece are stars with different colors here. And here's an enlarged view of it. Still not very impressive here, but uh, it's definitely a target you ought to seek out visually if you've not done so before. Now my favorite target to visually observe in uh, will always be the double, double cluster. Um, this image can't do it justice uh, compared to what you would actually see in the eyepiece. And here's an enlarged view of this. I used a 30 millimeter uh, 
two inch uh, eyepiece for this and and uh, while I like this image a lot it just can't compare to, to the view in an eyepiece. I just wanted to point out that while none of these images can really compare to either what you see in the eyepiece or what you can uh, see when the images are properly uh, imaged and processed. The purpose of the presentation is simply to show or give you an idea of what can be seen and also captured with very little effort using the hardware and software currently available today. Well folks, that's all I have for this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. Clear skies.